Hello everyone and welcome to another Top 5 Records video and today I'm going to be talking about the 5 best Dire Straits albums. Now I realized yesterday on Record Store Day when I purchased and made a video about the new Mark Knopfler EP The Boy, you can check it out here, that it was the first time I was talking about Mark Knopfler that I hadn't done any videos on Dire Straits at all for this channel. So that's gotta change so today I'm gonna do the Top 5 Best Dire Straits albums now you know what i'll kick off the list with this one on number five communique this album is awesome they recorded a couple of months after they had recorded their first album and i really enjoy it the sound is spectacular and it got released in 1979 now some of these songs are just Really, really awesome. I like Once Upon a Time in the West a lot. Uh, where do you think you're going? Communique. Um, and I should show you this because I'm so excited about what Mobile Fidelity Sound Lab has been doing to these pressings. These awesome, beautiful um, gatefold releases on 45 RPM. And this, I mean, these pressings really made the change for me because initially, I was not a big fan of Dire Straits. I started off playing in a band when I was 15 or 16 years old and I wanted hard rock. And then we had a bass player and he was completely into Dire Straits and he wanted to play Dire Straits songs. And my voice didn't, I mean, my voice was horrible doing something like Brothers in Arms, uh, which was very low. And I was a high pitched singer. So I just couldn't get, I couldn't get into it. And I was a Dire Straits hater for a very long time. But a couple of years ago, a friend of mine came over and he started purchasing these MoFi's and I slowly but surely got into them. Not just the MoFi's, I also listened to some original pressings and it came to live for me. And now I want to find all the originals as well and compare them. So I'll be doing more and more videos on Dire Straits. But to continue with the list, on number four, making movies. This one, to me, is an odd one out in a certain way. Um, I had the sense that this album more it has more of a certain narrative, a different theme. I really like the first two songs. They are incredible. Tunnel of Love, Romeo and Juliet. And this really plays like like you're um, to a certain in a certain way as if you're going to the theater and you're enjoying a, uh, uh, a narrative. Very nice release again by MoFi gatefold on 45 rpm really awesome on number four making movies now on to number three this one is um another odd one out in a certain way i can't keep saying that their first album self-titled dire straits now an incredible record with of course sultans of swing as the big hit being on there but overall listening to this one i understood why dire straits had gotten the name pop rock i never fully understood that because i this is not the kind of music where i come from they often play in pubs. Of course, they are hits because Dire Straits has very big hits. But what I kind of understand, going into pubs in London, having this one on, it's a bit rougher. You can hear the um, uh, the the edge in the guitar of Mark Knopfler. He, he's very focused on on nice licks, good solos. And he is an audiophile freak. I mean, I mean, these songs, the quality of the sound is just so impeccable. I would not directly link that to to the yeah the directness and the roughness of of pop rock. I'd rather say status quo is pop rock. But on this one, everything is a bit more raw, closer to a rougher rock origin. Also. This is really a 70s album. I mean, yeah, obviously it's recorded in 1978, but I think Dire Straits shows you a certain transgression from the 
rougher rock of the 70s and, and this is not rough in a way like like rainbow or deep purple or let's zeppelin no it, it is all very dire straits but this one has a little bit more of an edge and you can hear in these albums also the way the sound changed into the 80s and this one is still a very beautiful gorgeous pop rock album pop rock yeah pop rock on number three, the self-titled album. On number two, I was stunned when I heard this for the first time. Love Over Gold. The first copy I got of this record was a first European pressing because a friend of mine actually bought this pressing and thought, yeah, I won't need the original one anymore. And even on that first one, uh, putting it on, Opening with, I believe it's Telegraph Road, right? Yeah. Again, there's an element of narrative here. Mark Knopfler wants to tell you a story, but the atmosphere, I mean, the atmosphere, it just took me along on a ride. You know, you put this record on, and for the entirety, it's as if you are listening to. A movie, a movie not explicit in what it's trying to tell, but it's very steering in using instruments to create atmosphere and surroundings. And as if you're, yeah, traveling through the night or something like that. You had these 80s films, which had this bizarre travel into the night. Um, for example, Into the Night by John Landis. Then there was After Hours by Martin Scorsese. That kind of sense, but this is more and more mysterious. Perhaps it's a little bit my personal um, association, but I mean, look at this. This beautiful, thick cardboard package release. This record is an experience. Now, I think most of you already know what's going to be in the number one spot. And of course, it is this one. Brothers in Arms. Now, hear me out. Because sometimes it's controversial to be uh, boasting about this record uh, to Dire Straits fans or music fans at all. And that was also my initial problem when I had my first listen to it. I thought, oh, these are catchy 80s pop tunes. They're not of my taste. I like it rougher and 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 harder <laughs> not my band and i listened to it on a uh digitally but digital digital download of course this was one of the first digital recordings no, not one of the first there were more but this is a digital master it's a digital recording um though it sounds incredibly when it's when it's pressed on vinyl i mean the texture really adds something and i really want to do a comparison video with the uh, first UK pressing I bought last week. I want to buy a first US Bob Ludwig soon, and then I'm going to do a comparison to try and find what the best sounding pressing is. But this, when I put this one on, the 45 RPM mobile fidelity sound level one, I heard there was so much more to the sound than just catchy pop tunes. And let me first start off about just catchy pop tunes. Over the last couple of years, I've grown to respect the writing of a good, catchy pop tunes. I mean, the 80s became more and more radio and MTV um, obsessed and, and concentrated. But how do you remain true to your identity as an, uh, as an artist and go into the change? And we saw so many artists struggle with that in the 80s. I didn't see it personally because I'm too young for that. But when you look back at the records, that's going on. And Dire Straits, Mark Knopfler has remained true to his incredible ear for texture, solos, lyrics, good storytelling. He knows what his voice is capable of and where his strengths lie. And it's if you would place yourself in like early 80s and you'd see where pop music is going 
and you know what dire straits is all about, it might be hard to imagine where to go if you want to remain in a popular way. And the songs they came up with, the songs they recorded, the brilliant, catchy songwriting. I mean, the combination of the two, of 80s elements and of Dire Straits, it's just incredible. Money for nothing. It just is a gorgeous punch rocker. It is never too energetic. It's like a laid back control over the guitar. And it is roaring, warm, beautiful roar with the most gorgeous edition of Sting. I want my MTV. Gorgeous. So many great, great songs here. And again, the texture of the sound. And that's why, I, for example, really love this pressing uh, of Brothers in Arms uh, with the title track, Brothers in Arms. No, I have a first UK, I have a first European. They all sound very, very good. When you put this one on, you hear that there is so much more detail in, in, in the guitar, in the vocals, but also in, in the synthesizers and, and the, uh, the atmospherical tunes it creates. It's as if on this one, in all the detail and in all the perfect wide stereo image, you can almost taste the islands of the Falkland. For, uh, I, I know how to pronounce it in Dutch, but it was the Falkland War. So, so these, uh, I hope I'm not, not mispronouncing it, but probably I am. But it's almost as if you can taste the island, if you can taste the surroundings, these miscovered mountains. I mean, I mean, ah, gorgeous, brilliant album. And I think it's one of the highlights of the 80s. Serious, one of the highlights of the 80s. So I'm curious, what do you think? Do you agree? Do you disagree? Leave a comment below and I'll see you in my next video. Bye.